My name is Thomas Ledhart, and I have been at the Pomona College Department of Theater and Dance for uh, more than 30 years and less than 40, and somewhere in the hovering around the middle. I teach corporeal mime, which is an unusual art form devised by Etienne de Creux, who uh, taught and performed around Europe and Paris uh, from the 1930s on through the 80s and early 90s. This form, which is called corporeal mime, uh, doesn't have anything to do with pulling ropes or walls coming in on you. It has to do with the spine. The spine. And at the base of my spine, we have something which is called the sacrum. Uh, like sacred. The sacrum. And at the top of the spine, we have something which is called the occiput. Occiput. That's kind of a funny name. And between, we have all kinds of interesting, like notes on the piano, all kinds of possibilities. And our whole class is about how we can play those notes, how we can make those articulations work for us in a way that most people don't think about. So we're making it uh, artistic uh, and artificial and articulated, all three. I know that I can do it for you. This is, I don't know what the year was, but it's been some years. Johnny jump up, Johnny jump up. That is what they all call me. Johnny jump up, Johnny jump up. Let us all jump up. <laughs> and that was in the basement of the um, Methodist Church in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And um, I think it was Mother's Day or one of, those th uh, one of those holidays where we spent the whole time of Sunday school learning this little song and dance. Oh, but there were petunias and they were different. You know, they weren't jump ups. They were all the And so then we all did these for our parents and everybody applauded wildly. Oh, and we even had little potted plants to give to our parents. So, here's something that's really funny. We're, we're born into this body, and we spend a lifetime in the body, and we take care of it more or less well, but what about all of the infinite possibilities for movement? All of the ways that are not necessarily big dance ways, but smaller ways that marry well with text. So there's this idea that mind is silent. Whoa, what a terrible idea that is. So, as far back as we know in the history of mime, mime has not been silent, but it has been accompanied by a chorus, singing chorus, or a reciting chorus, or the performer, him or herself, has spoken or sung. Now, if you say, well then what is the difference between a regular actor and a mime? A mime is a person who uses his or her own experience for content. And now, lo and behold, after all of these years, it's all coming back around, isn't it? And we're getting actors who are interesting because they have a lot of content that they can bring to the situation. And so that's what all of the pandemic has been about, artistically, has been people turned in upon themselves, couldn't get to rehearsal, couldn't do this, couldn't do that. What, what can I do? What do I have that is uniquely my own? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been doing that for the last 30 years. So once in a while, you're a little bit ahead of the curve. Sometimes you're a little bit after the curve. Doesn't much matter, so long as you're having a good time. And so I would say to people, if, if you want to take mine, come in, have a look, see if it's for you. Maybe it's not. Try the water, test it out, see. And if it's not for you, fine. If it's for you, welcome. 